in their mission to figure out the first stars and universes that illuminated the cosmos, cosmologists are still in obscurity. However, they are drawing nearer to edification, one disclosure at a time. The staggering and unpreventable end of remarkable revelations by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, the billion-dollar time machine, has just officially marked its most memorable year of observations. Designed to capture the faint infrared glow of the universe's earliest luminous objects, Webb's vision ventured once more into the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, allowing it to acquire more and better information about infant systems than any other observatory yet built. Its hall of cosmic baby pictures has proven more abundant than most scientists had hoped for, with early universe galaxies appearing in numbers that challenge forecasts. Dozens have been observed so far, prompting excitement among researchers. Charlotte Mason, an astrophysicist at the University of Copenhagen, remarked, We, in fact, weren't anticipating this. In the weeks and months following JWST's discoveries of shockingly mature early galaxies, scholars and observers scrambled to understand them. Could the pack of unusual large and bright early galaxies be a result of errors in the telescope's initial observations? If genuine, could they somehow be explained by standard cosmological models? Or do they signify that the universe is more strange and complex than even our boldest speculations had ever assumed? Is it possible that the theory of the universe's origin was wrong? Join us today as we dive deep into how the James Webb Space Telescope has changed our understanding of the universe. To grasp the predicament, we must return to the time when the universe was believed to have been formed after the Big Bang. The baby universe began cooling within a few million years. The roiling plasma that filled space settled down, and electrons, protons, and neutrons combined into mostly neutral hydrogen. Things were calm and dark for a period known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. Then, something happened. Most of the material that flew apart after the Big Bang is made of something we can't see called dark matter. It has exerted a strong influence over the universe, particularly in its early stages. In the standard picture, cold dark matter, a term that implies invisible or sluggish particles, was scattered across the universe indiscriminately. In some regions, its distribution was denser, and in these areas, it began to clump together. Visible matter, meaning atoms, gathered around these dark matter clusters. As the matter cooled, it eventually coalesced, and the first stars were born. These new sources of radiation reionized the neutral hydrogen that filled the universe during the so-called age of reionization. Through gravity, larger and more complex structures developed, forming a vast cosmic web of galaxies. Meanwhile, everything continued to fly apart as the universe expanded rapidly. Astronomer Edwin Hubble figured out in the 1920s that the universe is expanding. In the late 1990s, his namesake, the Hubble Space Telescope, provided evidence that this expansion is accelerating. Imagine the universe as a loaf of raisin bread. It starts as a mixture of flour, water, yeast, and raisins. As the yeast ferments, the dough rises, and the raisins, representing galaxies, move further apart from each other. The Hubble telescope observed that the dough, the universe, is rising significantly faster, causing the raisins to move apart at a rate that defies their gravitational attraction. This acceleration seems to be driven by a mysterious force known as dark energy, represented by the Greek letter lambda. The lambda cold dark matter, LCDM, model incorporates values for dark matter, ordinary matter, and radiation into Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. It matches nearly all observations of the universe. One way to test this model is by examining extremely distant galaxies, which allows us to look back to the early few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The universe was simpler then, making it easier to compare against predictions. Astronomers initially attempted to view the earliest structures of the universe using the Hubble telescope in 1995. Over 10 days, Hubble captured 342 images of a seemingly empty patch of space in the Hubble deep field. Astronomers were astonished by the wealth of hidden details. Hubble could see thousands of galaxies at various distances and stages of development, extending further back in time than previously expected. Hubble continued to discover very distant galaxies, 
including one called GNZ-11 in 2016, a faint smudge dated to around 400 million years after the Big Bang. This was surprisingly early for a galaxy, but it fit within the LCDM model because it was tiny, with only 1% of the Milky Way's mass, and somewhat isolated. Astronomers needed a more powerful telescope to determine whether GNZ-11 was an anomaly or part of a larger population of mysterious early galaxies that could help determine if we are missing a crucial piece of the LCDM equation. That's why the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, was built. Renowned as the largest and most powerful observatory ever launched from Earth, JWST was designed to revolutionize our understanding of the universe. Positioned 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth, with minimal interference and cooled close to absolute zero by its tennis court sized sun shield, the telescope features a gigantic segmented mirror and highly sensitive instruments. These tools were designed to reveal details of cosmic dawn never before observed. The telescope has already achieved beyond astronomers' wildest dreams, seeing galaxies remarkably close to the very beginning, examining exoplanet atmospheres in unprecedented detail, and providing stunning new views of nearby galaxies. But it's only just getting started. As Webb's vision reaches back into the earliest few hundred million years after the Big Bang, it is providing more and better information about infant galaxies than any other facility yet. The implications of Webb's early discoveries could fundamentally alter our understanding of cosmic history, affecting not only our knowledge of ancient galaxies but also our place in the universe. As JWST researcher Mark McCaffrey, a senior advisor for space and exploration at the European Space Agency, said, You build these machines not to confirm the expected but to reveal the unexpected. Worldview, however, to break it, you simply don't know how they will break. Scientists use a form of the Doppler effect to measure the distances of objects. This is comparable to sorting out the area of an emergency vehicle in light of an alarm. The alarm sounds higher in pitch as it draws near and afterward lower as it subsides. The farther away a world is, the quicker it moves away from us as its light stretches to longer frequencies and seems redder. The extent of this redshift is communicated as z, where a given value of z tells you how long an object's light should have traveled to reach us. One of the first papers on JWST data came from Naidu, the MIT astronomer, and his partners, whose search algorithm hailed a universe that appeared mysteriously brilliant and untouchably far off. Naidu named it Glass Z13, demonstrating its clear distance at a redshift of 13, further away than anything seen before. The world's redshift was subsequently overhauled down to 12.4, and it was renamed Glass Z12. Other cosmologists working on different sets of JWST observations were revealing redshift values from 11 to 20, including one galaxy called Cheers 1749, or CR2Z71, whose light seems to have left at 13.7 billion years ago, only 220 million years after the Big Bang barely an eye blink after the start of time itself. That's what these putative discoveries proposed, the slick story known as LCDM may be fragmented in some way. Systems became tremendous immediately in the early universe. You don't anticipate seeing enormous galaxies, said Chris Lovell, an astrophysicist at the University of Portsmouth in Britain. Indeed, in a study published in November, specialists investigated virtual experiences of galaxies represented by the LCDM model and found that JWST's early bright galaxies were significantly heavier than the ones that formed simultaneously in the simulations. Some astronomers and media outlets asserted that JWST was breaking cosmology, yet not everyone was persuaded. One issue is that LCDM expectations aren't necessarily cut and dry. While dark matter and dark energy are straightforward, apparent matter has complex interactions and behaviors, and no one knows exactly what went down in the first years after the Big Bang. Those early times must be approximated in computer simulations. Another issue is that it's difficult to tell precisely the distance away galaxies really are. In the month since the initial papers, the ages of some of the confirmed high redshift systems have been revised. Some were downgraded to later stages of cosmic development based on the updated telescope calibrations. 
Cheers 1749 is found in a region of the sky containing a bunch of galaxies whose light was produced 12.4 billion years ago, and Naidu says it's possible the galaxy is part of this group, a closer interloper that may be full of dust, causing it to appear more redshifted than it really is. According to Naidu, Cheers 1749 is peculiar, regardless of how far away it will be. It would be a new type of galaxy that we didn't know about, a very low mass, small galaxy that has somehow accumulated a lot of dust, which is something we generally don't expect for extremely distant galaxies. Everybody knew that the most authoritative distance estimates would require JWST's powerful capabilities. JWST not only observes starlight through photometry, measuring brightness, but also through spectroscopy, measuring a light's frequencies. If a photometric observation is like an image of a face in a crowd, then a spectroscopic observation is like a DNA test that can recognize a person's ancestry. Naidu and others who discovered large early galaxies estimated redshift using brightness-based measurements, essentially checking out faces in the crowd using a great camera. That method is nowhere near infallible. At a January meeting of the American Astronomical Society, space experts joked that perhaps half of the early galaxies seen with photometry alone would turn out to be misestimated. But in December, cosmologists announced that they had combined the two techniques for four galaxies. The JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, or JADE's team, looked for galaxies whose infrared light spectrum suddenly cuts off at a specific frequency known as the Lyman break. This break happens because hydrogen floating in the space between galaxies absorbs light. Due to the expanding universe, the ever-rising raisin portion, the illumination of distant galaxies is shifted, so the frequency at that sudden break shifts too. When a galaxy's light appears to drop off at longer frequencies, it is more distant. Jade's distinguished spectra with redshifts up to 13.2 indicate that the galaxy's light was emitted 13.2 billion years ago. When the data was downloaded, Jade's scientists began going nuts in a common elation group. According to Kevin Hain, an astronomer at the University of Arizona, he said it was like, wow, oh my god, we did it, we did it, we did it. He said these spectra are just the start of what he thinks will be astronomy-changing science. Robertson, a Jade astronomer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, says the discoveries show that the early universe changed rapidly in its first billion years, with galaxies growing multiple times faster than they do today. It's like how a hummingbird is a small animal, he said, but its heart beats so rapidly that it's living sort of a frantic life compared to other animals. The heartbeat of these galaxies is occurring on a much faster timescale than something the size of the Milky Way. But were their hearts beating too quickly for LCDM to make sense of? As cosmologists and the public marveled at JWST images, scientists began working in the background to determine whether the universe flickering in our view truly aligns with LCDM or simply helps refine the numbers we should plug into its conditions. One significant yet poorly understood number concerns the masses of the earliest galaxies. Cosmologists try to determine their masses to see if they match LCDM predictions. World development, a cosmic system's mass is determined from its splendor, however, Megan Donahue, an astrophysicist at Michigan State College, expresses that, at best, the connection between mass and splendor is a ballpark estimation based on assumptions gathered from known stars and well-studied galaxies. One key assumption is that stars generally form within a certain measurable range of masses called the initial mass function, IMF. This IMF boundary is critical for calculating a galaxy's mass from measurements of its splendor because hot, blue, massive stars produce more light, while most of a galaxy's mass is usually contained in cool, red, small stars. However, it's possible that the IMF was different in the early universe. If this is true, JWST's early galaxies may not be as heavy as their brightness suggests, they may be bright but light. This possibility causes headaches, as altering this fundamental input to the Lambda CDM model could yield almost any answer one might want. Somerville said that confirmation that Lambda CDM can accommodate at least some of JWST's early galaxies arrived the day before Christmas. 
cosmologists led by Benjamin Keller at the University of Memphis examined a handful of significant supercomputer simulations of Lambda CDM universes and found that the simulations could produce galaxies as massive as the four that were spectroscopically studied by the JWST team. These four are remarkably smaller and dimmer than other proposed early galaxies, like Glass C12. In the Young study, all the simulations yielded galaxies the size of the JWST discoveries at a redshift of 10. One simulation could create such galaxies at a redshift of 13, the same as what JWST observed, and two others could construct the galaxies at an even higher redshift. None of the JWST's galaxies was in conflict with the current Lambda CDM worldview. Keller and Associates reported on the preprint server AR-14 on December 24. However, they lack the heft to overturn the prevailing cosmological model. JWST's galaxies have other unique attributes. Hinden says their stars appear to be unpolluted by metals from previously exploded stars. This could mean their population includes the long-sought first generation of stars to ever light up and that they might be contributing to the reionization of the universe. If this is true, JWST has already looked back to the mysterious period when the universe was set on its current course. Despite these high-level findings, researchers remain in a state of transition, continuously analyzing, scrutinizing, and re-evaluating the data provided by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. The telescope's extraordinary capabilities offer a tantalizing glimpse into the earliest moments of cosmic history but the complexities of interpreting this data highlight the challenges inherent in unraveling the universe's mysteries. As scientists delve deeper into the observations yielded by JWST, they face a multitude of questions that challenge simple answers. The discrepancies between theoretical models and observational evidence spark debates within the scientific community, leading to further investigations and refinement of existing theories. Each new discovery serves as a catalyst for progress, pushing the boundaries of our understanding and inspiring new avenues of inquiry. As researchers continue to sift through the wealth of data provided by JWST, they do so with a sense of humility and awe for the vastness of the universe. Each observation offers a fleeting glimpse into the grand tapestry, inviting us to consider our place within the grand design of existence. And while the journey toward enlightenment may be fraught with challenges and uncertainties, it is ultimately a journey worth undertaking, a venture that promises to expand our horizons and deepen our appreciation for the wonders of the cosmos. In this ongoing quest for understanding, collaboration and interdisciplinary exchange play vital roles. Scientists from diverse fields come together to share insights, challenge assumptions, and collectively push the boundaries of knowledge. Through collaborative efforts, researchers can leverage their individual expertise to tackle complex questions and unravel the intricate workings of the universe. Moreover, the significance of JWST extends beyond the realm of pure scientific inquiry. Its discoveries have the potential to inspire future generations, igniting a sense of wonder and curiosity about the universe. By fostering a deeper appreciation for the beauty and complexity of the cosmos, JWST serves as a catalyst for scientific education and public engagement. As we navigate the intricacies of cosmic exploration, it is essential to maintain a sense of curiosity, humility, and generosity. The universe has always been, and will continue to be, full of surprises, challenging our biases and inviting us to explore new frontiers of knowledge. Ultimately, the journey of discovery, fueled by JWST, is not just about unraveling the mysteries of the universe, it is about embracing the wonder of existence itself. With each new observation and each new revelation, we come closer to a deeper understanding of our place in the universe and the profound interconnectedness of all things. And as we look into the depths of space, we are reminded of the limitless possibilities that lie ahead, waiting to be explored and embraced with boundless curiosity and wonder.